Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a very realistic drop shadow to an object. You may have seen it before on the photograph where you have a photograph laying on the background and there is a drop shadow behind it. The one corner of that photograph looks like it's folded, it's rolling a little bit. And that's due to a drop shadow that is on that corner that is very different from the rest of the image. And to explain better what, I'm, what we're going to do, I've done it here on this piece of paper here. The round piece of material here has a drop shadow. You may see on the screen here a very faint, very small drop shadow that gives a very realistic effect. But here on that part of the paper, there is a deeper, thicker drop shadow. And it looks like the paper is sort of falling over a little bit. And this is due to two effects. The first one is the black shadow and the second one is a highlight on this part of the paper. Because if a paper is lifted on one side, then the light is going to react differently towards this part of the paper. So you need to add a drop shadow but also the highlight and that's what most people tend to forget sometimes. So to do this I'm going to hide my layer here and then create a new layer and you can do this by clicking the plus here or the minus to delete the layer. Okay. So working on this layer number two I'm going to go to my materials and choose this piece of paper here. I'm going to align it and resize it. Make sure that this is selected to constrain the size and type in 12 inches. With the paper selected, go to scissors, punches and choose ellipse. And we're going to reduce the size, reposition it here and click cut. And now I'm going to cut the part I don't want which is the edge here. Okay. Choose the select tool and with the piece of paper selected, go to the shadow tool and just click once and that's it. Select and click on the side and you can see there is drop shadow, small drop shadow around the paper. So it gives it a 3D effect. Okay, but that's not enough. I want to do more here. And I want to create a bigger drop shadow around this side of my material. So what I'm going to do is use the quick shape and I'm going to use the quick ellipse here. Click and drag a shape just like this. Go to my color tab and choose fill and black. Okay, with the select tool, I'm going to reposition this and change its angle. Can change the size. Like this. Okay, and with this black shape selected, go to the shadow tool and click and drag a shadow just like this. Go to arrange and send it back underneath the paper. Okay, with the select tool, I can just change my shape again. I can also use the arrow keys on my keyboard to be more precise. Just like this. Okay. To have a better better view, I'm just going to click on the sign here. And yes, it looks quite good. It looks like very realistic and very 3D. However, something is missing and it is the highlight here. Okay, now what I'm going to do to create the highlight is choose my pen tool. Okay, select the pen tool and I'm going to create a highlight around this area here. So, what I'm going to do first is create a first point by clicking on the edge of the paper here, just like this. I think I've created two, so I'm going to control Z to do it. So, what I'm going to do now to create a highlight is select the pen tool. Using the pen tool I'm going to create a little white shape around here. And I'm using the pen tool because there's a curve here. So the first thing I'm going to do is click once here to create a point. 
click and hold down and drag and as I'm dragging you can see there's a curve in between the two points that I've created and I want this curve to follow the curve of the paper okay next I'm going to click somewhere around here once and release and then a second time here and I'm going to click hold down and drag so there is a curve here and I drag towards the other points so there's a curve I release I'm going to click the first point just like this. Okay. Now I'm going to my color tab and choose the fill and select white. Okay. So what I can do as well is select my shape here. I can change the points if I'm not really happy with it and just click and drag the line here. So it's for, it follows the curve a little bit better. With this white shape selected. I'm going to click the transparency tool and click and drag a line across my white shape just like this. Make sure that here it says linear and then click on edit. And you got this little window with a gradient and the gradient represents the gradient you've got here. So there's a white point here and it's transparent on this side and there's a white point here and it's transparent on this side. There's a black point here and it's white here. There's a black point and it's opaque. So black on a gradient means opaque which is in this case white because that's the color that I chose and white here means it's transparent. You can see that the squares here it's transparent. What I want to have here is three points basically. I want to be transparent on this edge, on this edge, transparent on that edge, and white in the middle. So I'm going to create a third point by clicking here somewhere here, and that creates a point that is in the middle. And I want this point, the black one here, to be transparent. So I'm going to click on it. If by mistake you click on the side of it, you might create another point. If you don't want that point, you can select it, click and drag it out of the window. This little window here, click and drag it out. Okay, so select this point and change the slider here from black to white. So it's completely transparent. This one is completely transparent. And this one is sort of grey, so it's not completely opaque, which means that here is going to be white but with transparency applied to it. Click OK. And as you can see, it's transparent here, transparent there and white in the middle. I'm going to pull this a little bit here. Okay. And uh, that as well. And you can just you know change the angle. Obviously I don't want to see that to be white. So you have to reduce it and make sure it becomes transparent. I quite like it like this. However I think it's a bit too white. So with this white shape still selected, go back to edit, select the middle point here and try to slide it towards the white a little bit more. So now it's about 34. And that's it. Click select and click on the side. And now you've got my the drop shadow and the highlight. Okay, anytime you can select either the highlight and replace it, reposition it where you want to. Maybe down here a little bit so that it matches um, the drop shadow here. And that's it. Now you can create your page, like I've done it here, with all your elements and photograph, and you've got your piece of paper with a very, very realistic drop shadow and highlight. And this concludes our tutorial. Thank you.